Hi, this is Ian, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who taught me about this SCSI to SD card. So what you're looking at is the adapter, me removing it and putting it on the SCSI to SD chip, and it has a micro SD slot. Furthermore, it has a USB and it's the micro USB. So if you just do a Google search for SCSI to SD, what you're gonna see is you know, all this stuff come up, but you wanna go to the code page. And those are the newer, those two pictures are the newer chips that can take a full sized SD card, which is great. There are two things you want. Currently, it's at version 4.84, I believe. But what you have to recognize is the card version is 5.1. So that card I have is a 5.1. <clears throat> so you end up downloading a utility and the actual firmware. And putting the firmware on is um, actually really simple because once you click on the utility, what you're going to see here, I'm not going to show you the updating of the firmware, but you get this page and along the bottom of the screen, it's kind of like searching for the card. And what ends up happening is when you um, put the card in, well, what you see me doing right here is changing the start time of the card. So if you set it to like 50 seconds or milliseconds or whatever, and then change the auto to one. It allows the VS to start up with the card plugged in. I was having a lot of trouble with this and um, it just I just wanted to make sure I made a video so everybody can see it. So you're seeing all the steps that I went through. So as long as your screen looks like mine. Now there's another thing you can do so that you can hot swap it, but I didn't bother doing that. But in any case, then you go back to here and if you you're just seeing all the different SCSI ports. So now we connect it. And what happens is the computer automatically notices it's there. You see that window on the left? It's showing you what's actually happening. So now you have to save these changes that you made on this screen. And you see I changed it to like 32 gig. It's a 32 gig card, by the way. But it's not going to save all 32. But um, then you go in here and you have to save it to the device, meaning the chip. And you're going to see how long it takes. It's really fast. It was the same with the firmware. When you put the firmware on, it's fast. And it was the other option, one of those other options that was highlighted. The thing that you, that the missing step was knowing that you have to save all of those changes to the card. So now that those are on the card, you can disconnect everything. Okay, so now we're going to go to the VS in my studio. So I have two VS machines and we're going to plug it into my second machine. So you have to have the DB25 cable. Or I guess they have some way you can connect it right to it, right to the board. And some people, you know, connect, open up CDs, old SCSI CDs, and connect this to the inside of it. I actually tried doing that, but this is, it's fine like this. I'm just going to make a little case for it. 
So now we turn on the VS. And you, I want you to see exactly how long this thing takes to load. Right, so it's not too bad. So now we have to go into the project and look at the list because we still have to format the card. Now, I had already formatted this card and, and I did it at 16 gig. So what you're gonna notice is it looks like that. So now we're gonna, we're gonna reformat the SCSI drive. did 10 gigabyte partitions didn't worry about surface scan and all that and let's see how long this takes As you can see, the light starts flashing like crazy on the device. So we're close to the end now. So, you know, it takes maybe three minutes or so. More like five. So now at this point, you're seeing that the SCSI is okay, you know, everything's linked to it, and it's gonna it's gonna reboot itself in a second. So supposedly this is going to be good because you can transfer a lot of tracks for your recording, you know, straight out the SCSI into this and then into this. And then you plug this into an adapter and put it into your computer. And then you use the VS 
wave exporter program in your computer and then you'd be able to take all your tracks and hand them to somebody who's come to your studio or if you want to edit them in another program so I simply use the next device you're about to see which is a zoom multi-track so what you're seeing here is my zoom live track they have an 8 version, a 12 version, and a 20 version. I just do 8 direct outs from the VS into the Zoom, and it gives you those individual tracks. You can record individual tracks or a stereo track if you want, and then it puts it on an SD card, and then that's how you can easily get it into a computer. It costs about $500, and it's, sonically it sounds great. They put different converters in it. So watch the rest. Peace.